Hey guys, since July, I've been covering the evolution of the 180 mech meta. However, the 180 robot is really heavily reliant on pneumatics, and there's a glaring issue. It's $120, well actually 125 per kit, and not every school or private team can afford it. And the 180 mech literally does not work without pneumatics. And although you can make a half cactus using the 180, according to Q&A number 2664, as well as uh, rule SC3, beams that are directly contacting the floor kind of force the pins upwards a bit, as you can see in this picture. So the top part of the pin, um, it kind of pushes into the floor. And so not only does this make the stack on top slightly uh, tilted, which some referees may not count as roughly vertical. The bigger issue is that there's kind of this gap over here of air, which you can see that the pin is not fully inside the beam. And this means that it's not fully nested. As the GDC answered, the stash formed by pins A and B qualifies as roughly vertical, but the pins are not fully nested with the beam. Now, if we look at rule SC3, we can see that in clause B, it says a pin is connected if it is fully nested with another scoring object. Um, and yeah, so beams that are just placed on the ground really do not count for any points at all. And as I said before, you know, the 180 Mac is very heavily reliant on pneumatics, um, as you can see here. But why does this really matter? Well, the motor distribution of the 180 Max make it almost impossible to lift the beam without pneumatics because uh, you'll have to substitute the claw in the front for a motor as well as the beam clamp in the back for a motor. And that would mean two for the drive base, uh, two for the 180 Mac, one for the claw, and one for the beam clamp. And that leaves you with zero motors left um, for the actual beam lift. And that's a really big issue because now you can't really lift your beam up uh, to score on like the normal cactuses, right? To lift the beam up to make the pins nested. And this kind of just adds to the fact that conveyors and revolvers that really don't require pneumatics would be much better for a lot of teams. But that's kind of trapping teams um, with the decision of having to go with a specific design of a robot while stopping them from trying to build like a 180 bot in this example, which is a really popular design. And also we've already seen that conveyors and revolvers perform much worse in competitions with factors like alliance luck and the placement of pins. So there hasn't really been a good way to do 180 with motors until now. So if you tried to make a 180 claw with gears like team 31337W did from all the way back in July, as you can see, um, this is a, a motorized claw and also a motorized clamp in the back you might notice two very big issues. So number one is that these gears, they don't have a lot of power, especially over a long distance when they're transferring all the all that power through the gear train. There's often a lot of slippage. And I don't know if you can see it in this picture, but um, you can also see that the claws are kind of misaligned. And with the limitations of how gears work and gear ratios and that stuff, um, it's pretty hard to be able to hold a pin on both sides with enough power. And the actually biggest issue is that motors themselves have a slack. So oftentimes the motor will be able to move like back and forth, maybe like one or two degrees. And that just kind of allows the pin to slip directly hours, especially over long gear trains like this. And um, also if you don't have a perfect length, you will have to use like idler gears with small gears and weird spacing that just adds to the gear slippage. And Kawaii Omar actually recently posted their brilliant idea in our Discord server. Um, so this is a a 4x8 claw, so pretty different from what, what we saw before. And we don't actually use gears in this scenario. Uh, what we actually use is um, these 1x beams that are on a pivot, and they actually push the claw in. So push or pull the claw in. And this kind of solves the problem of gear slippage and, you know, long, like long gear chains. And of course, there's still some gears hidden underneath there, but it's greatly reduced from the number that we saw earlier. And although motor stock is still a problem, um, the way that this like pusher kind of works, it's basically guaranteed that um, it's going to be able to kind of hold the pin in place. So you can see here. This is kind of how it works. So yeah, really good idea right there. You can see um, it has pretty good hold on the pin. 
Um, of course, you can add some extra like rubber bands and stuff just to make sure that the pin doesn't really move around. And also, you can kind of swap this motor out, um, kind of put it inside here and use bevel gears to power these uh, two gears over here instead of putting your motor in this giant like ugly protruding type of placement. Um, you know, that's like pretty easy to change. Now, we basically got the claw issue solved, and currently we're using five motors. So two for the drive base, two for the 180 rotation, and one for the claw. But we still need the beam clamp and the beam lift, but we only have one motor left. Uh, so there are actually two different ways to solve this. So number one, we can look at this great idea posted by Team 6699 from Dr. Players Lab in Taiwan. Uh, basically, this makes the beam clamp fully unpistonized. So you might be wondering how this works. It kind of acts as like if the beam tries to keep going down, it's going to clamp on harder. Um, so of course, you can experiment this with uh, yourself. And uh, when there's something on the bottom that kind of pushes it up, like, for example, um, the standoff goal or pins on top of it kind of just lets go. And it looks pretty consistent. Um, you can also see that it holds the beam very strong and even when there's a lot of load on it for example like with a full uh beam you know the beam doesn't really move around and it kind of works really well so that's a whole motor saved so with the one motor left you can try to make a beam lift like this part uh, maybe with like a compound gear ratio like a one to eight or a one to ten and although it'll be slow you're kind of just aiming for these small cactuses right on the ground and not really on the standoff hole and uh, these two pins are not really that tall, so it shouldn't take that long. And of course, you can always use rubber bands to try to kind of assist your motion because rubber bands do help a lot with lifting heavy loads. Another, but in my opinion, riskier method is a more experimental design from uh, this team right here. So instead of having another full arm for the beam, um, they kind of add their beam clamp to their 180 mech. So you can see that kind of small thing protruding over there over here um that is the beam clamp and so once they stack those pins on you can see that they actually clamp the beam right after like that so they kind of just push into the beam and it helps them lift the entire thing up so this definitely works for uh smaller cactuses as well as the standoff goal and it is much more light and it's more much more sleek and definitely much more unique because I really hadn't seen any robots using this except for, you know, the original creator. And also, we can add 6699's non-pneumatic clamp onto this, and that would kind of mean that you have actually a whole motor left. So um, with this motor, you can add speed to your drive base, like a differential power three motor drive base, or change your drive base to be like an H drive, like the team in this video, you can see they're kind of moving around with a lot of agility because they have a wheel in the middle. And I think that it might be actually pretty helpful this season. And now finally, like another way to solve the beam nesting problem is with this method that Paco from 9923X thought about. Um, so if we skip forward a bit, you can see uh, kind of a physical demonstration of the pins not becoming roughly vertical and um, like not being nested. You can see a lot of open space. Um, but with a bit of momentum and speed, you can have, kind of have the beam ride up onto the loader, um, the loader station from the side. And now we can see that the stacks are perfectly vertical and also nested into the ground. And, and if you don't believe me, here's a photo from CAD that kind of perfectly shows um, that this one beam right down here is perfect height for these pins to drop down because they're like barely touching, almost touching the field. And so I think this should be counted uh, because the pins are, of course, roughly vertical and also they're fully nested. However, obviously having more stacks like a 91 point stack is always better. So I do recommend trying the non-pneumatic beam lift method I talked about earlier. Now, a lot of people have asked me if getting pneumatics is worth it. And in my opinion, that kit is definitely worth uh, the $125 uh, since you get four long pistons, uh, four long pistons, and four short pistons, which is more than enough for multiple different robots. And pneumatics really has a lot of use cases, especially this year, because there's a lot of opening, closing, clamping, etc. And not only that, it also makes your robot much faster and overall more powerful. 
And pneumatics can also be used for small additional mechanisms that your th team thinks of. For example, like a preload mech or, you know, something like that or a starting pin mechanism. Um, however, I do understand that some people won't be able to get it for many different reasons. And that's why we made this video. And if you have any comments or any thoughts on improvements, make sure you drop your comment down below. And again, if you're a new or veteran Vex IQ team looking for our help, you can sign up for our free online coaching program through the second link in the description, uh, where you can get direct help from some of the world's best competitors one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, we do have a lot of signups right now. So we're kind of going through um, and trying to find the teams that will work best with us, you know, p teams in our time zone, teams that are active online, and also teams willing to put our name in your team name. And of course, as the season progresses and more ideas come out, we will re review them and explain them. And as always, credit the original creator. Uh, so you can see all of our credits down in the description. But that's going to be all for today. So see you guys next time.